whether the milkman arrived at your door this morning by van, float, or wearing the old-fashioned yoke, one thing is certain. The milk he delivered started right here, on the farm. It may even have come from this farm, high up in the Cotswolds at Selsley, near Stroud. There can be seen one of the finest pedigree herds in the country. And in the country is right. Twice daily, the farmer or one of his men walk along country roads behind the herd, driving them to the farm. Often in the process, they hold up traffic. But fortunately, the irate motorist is less frequently observed than the patient one. When the farmyard is reached, the cows need no driving to their respective stall. Each one knows its place, and woe betide the newcomer who lurches into the wrong stall. Once in the milking position, the beast has its rear legs loosely chained. After all, what farmer wants to sail across his yard, ending up on the dung heap with a pail of milk on his head? From start to finish, in the actual milking operation, there is a strict observance of the rules of hygiene. The cow's flanks and others are thoroughly cleaned and washed over with disinfectant. Another precaution is dry cleaning with a curry comb and brush, which is done two or three times a week. Milk is formed in the udder from food substances carried in the bloodstream. It is being formed in the udder all the time between milkings. And to get as much milk as possible from the cow, it is important to milk her out quickly and completely. Let down of milk is all important. The cow can release milk or she can hold it up, and any form of nervous tension will make a beast hold up her milk. Noise strange surroundings, a change of cowman, or a change of routine. Letdown can be encouraged by good milking technique, and in particular by preparing the cow properly beforehand. The udder is stimulated with warm water, and milking starts within minutes of this washing. The whole milking operation, whether by hand, or as almost wholly done today by electric milking machine, is finished as soon as possible. The first milk was drawn into a strip cup and examined for signs of mastitis or other trouble. However cows are milked, it is ideal to have the same interval between milkings, 12 hours apart and twice a day milking. Milk can be sampled at any time and tested for its keeping qualities and freedom from various bacteria. Milk which does not keep properly is returned to the farmer, so he loses money. Milk is tested regularly, and if not up to hygiene standard, there may be a loss of threepence per gallon until the milk has come up to that standard again. The cooler the milk, the longer it keeps fresh. By law, it must be cooled to within 5 degrees Fahrenheit of the temperature of the water supply. But it is always better to get it down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit as soon after milking as possible. Once filled by the farmer, the churns are placed outside the farm entrance, usually on a raised platform because of their weight, to await collection by the creamery lorry. In hot weather, precautions are taken to keep the churns cool, and in order to shield them from the glare of the sun, thatched sides and roof are often provided. Filled churns weigh heavily, and when the collecting lorry is on its way back to the creamery, it is carrying a very heavy and costly load.
Lorries are arriving at regular intervals at the creamery premises where they are promptly unloaded. One of the first jobs is to take a sample which is immediately removed to the laboratory where it will be subjected to tests. The tests are made to ensure that a 100% standard of hygiene is maintained. When milk is tested, the analyst obtains two sets of figures. Butter fat percentage, which shows the amount of fat in the milk, and solids not fat percentage, which shows the amount of all other substances. What is left after these figures are added together is water. By law, there is a legal minimum for milk of 3% butter fat and 8.5% solids not fat. A payment on quality scheme was introduced for the farmer in 1964. As a cow gets older the percentage of fats and solids gets less and they are fed unchopped hay or fibrous roots daily to keep up the batter, butter fat in their milk particularly when they first go out to grass in the spring. Farmers have a system of milk recording and one of the objects of this is to ensure that the costly food necessary for milking cows is used to best advantage. Having received the go-ahead from the laboratory, the staff who handle the churns empty them into special containers and the milk passes through apparatus intended to ensure that no foreign bodies reach the bottling machinery. Once emptied, the churns have to be sterilized. And as in all departments of the creamery, a very high standard is maintained. Like milking equipment on the farm, the churns are subjected to various washes, cold and hot, followed by sterilization and rinsing. They are then ready to be returned to the farmer. Many thousands of gallons of milk are stored in these giant tanks. In readiness for the next stage of the operation, which is the pasteurizing unit. This unit is one of the most closely watched processes in the whole creamery. The temperature of the milk is brought up to 161 and a half degrees Fahrenheit and is then quickly dropped to 40 degrees. The process ensures the destruction of bacteria and the milk is then almost ready for the next stage, which will be the bottling. Despite the constant plea that milk bottles should be rinsed before being put out for collection, no chances can be taken with any bottle which comes back to the creamery. Everyone is scrutinized to make certain that it measures up to the standard laid down before it enters the washing unit. The bottles are then fed into a high-powered washer, being subjected to a process which makes it impossible for any germ to live. The sparkling clean bottles then pour out of the washing unit. But as they travel on the next stage,
stage of their journey, they are watched by experienced eyes to see that all are fit to re-enter circulation. Every creamery manager knows that at no time must any chances be taken. That is why the cooperation of the public is urged in keeping bottles clean at home. Next comes the important job of filling the bottles, and as they roll up in their thousands, they are filled with the exact measure according to their size. Once filled, the bottles pass to the capping machines, which stamp into position the attractive metal foil tops, which have long now taken the place of the cardboard tops, which have the opening hole in the center, and through which school children always placed a straw. The tops vary in color according to the grade of milk, but all appear equally popular with the birds who often make merry with a bottle left too long on the doorstep. A more recent innovation has been the milk carton. It was devised principally for use in the milk vending machines, but in many homes it has proved more popular than the bottle as it can be destroyed after being emptied or it can be used as a fire lighter. As with the bottle, each carton is filled exactly according to its size and then moves on to be sealed. Once filled, the crates are ready to be collected by retailers or to be conveyed by a fleet of creamery lorries much further afield. These lorries, carrying large loads, cover a wide area and deliver the crates to many outlying towns and villages. From delivery points, the milk is collected by retailers who take it on its final journey to your door. In all, the operation of milking, testing, bottling, and delivery has taken only a matter of hours in order to ensure that your milk is fresh from the can. milk will be brought to your door by a real Cotswold milkmaid. And now, all that remains to be done is to sit back and listen to that snap, crackle, and pop.